Good evening from Las Vegas. I'm Chris Hayes, and tonight the nation must once again answer a question. Is now a good time to talk about gun violence in this country? Or are massacres like the one that unfolded right behind me two nights ago? A terrifying, almost endless hailstorm of bullets that left almost 600 people dead or wounded. Is that just something we are all willing to live with? What one survivor called the tragic cost of freedom. It's a tragic cost of freedom is that uh, people can do bad things. If you can find a gun law that could prevent this from happening, I could sign up today. But I am proud of our country's Second Amendment rights, and I'm glad we're allowed to defend ourselves. We now know the gunmen behind this attack, the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history, had built up a vast stockpile of firearms, all of them apparently, as far as we know now, purchased legally. We got our first glimpse of those weapons today in this new video taken outside Stephen Paddock's hotel room. Through the door, you can see what appears to be one of the gunmen's high-powered rifles mounted on a shooting bipod, a device obviously designed to provide more stability for the long-range firing he was planning. According to an internal law enforcement document seen by NBC News, 23 total firearms were found in that hotel suite at the Mandalay Bay Hotel, another 19 found at the gunman's home north of Las Vegas. This man managed to get his hands on 42 guns, at least some of them semi-automatic, plus explosives and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Law enforcement officials say the gunman had two bump stocks, a completely legal device used to modify a semi-automatic rifle to fire rapidly as if it were fully automatic. It is clear from the videos, and particularly the audio from the night of the attack, that those bump stocks worked largely as designed. We are talking about weapons of war, which was exactly what it felt like Sunday night, according to an Afghanistan veteran I talked to today, who was working security at the music festival. Did it feel like a war zone to you? Yeah, it actually did. I was involved in a, a lethal encounter a few years ago. Um, it was in the line of duty um, incident, but nothing like this. You know, nothing like a barrage of gunfire coming in and you got multiple casualties, mass casualties coming in. I can honestly tell you, after everything that I've been in training I've done and been through, I mean, I don't, I, I've never seen anything like this. Much more of that interview ahead. The president is due right here in Las Vegas tomorrow to meet with victims and first responders. This morning, he told reporters he'll eventually get around to talking gun policy. Look, we have a tragedy. We're going to do, and, and what happened in Las Vegas is in many ways a miracle. The police department has done such an incredible job, and we'll be talking about gun laws as time goes by. But in talking points given out to political allies, which were obtained by NBC News, the White House argues, quote, when it comes to gun control, let's be clear, new laws won't stop a madman committed to harming innocent people. They will curtail the freedoms of law-abiding citizens. There's about as little appetite for a real gun safety debate among Republican lawmakers, including those who represent Nevada. That dialogue does need to occur, but I don't think now is the time for this. You know, we have uh, a lot of victims. We have a lot of survivors. Yeah, I think it's particularly inappropriate to politicize an event like this. It just happened within the last day and a half. It's entirely premature to be discussing about legislative solutions, if any. But there's time in, in the coming weeks to find those answers and do those sorts of things that we need to do and see what the lessons are learned. But I think uh, right now it's just that, you know, that humility, uh, thoughts and prayers to those folks that are affected. I'm, I'm not for changing the law right now. I am against politicizing this. According to Senator John Thude, the third ranking Republican in the Senate, it's on all of us in the public to learn how to live with the threat of gun violence. All of us want to do everything we can to prevent tragedies like that from happening again. You know, it's uh, in an open society. People, when somebody does what he wants to do, it's going to be hard to prevent everything. But I think people have to be, are going to have to take steps in their own lives to take precautions to protect themselves. And, and in situations uh, like that, um, you know, try and stay safe. As somebody said, get small. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.